clicked on the video, I've got my axe, knife and a saw. I've got a few, a few sheepskins and deer hides in here and a sleeping bag, I've got some food. Believe it or not, I've even got a wood stove. And the plan is to spend the next three days, maybe four days right here in this underground stealth shelter. And I've got my dog with me as well to keep me company. And also if it gets a bit cold, she can warm me up in the middle of the night. Hey, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> so if you missed my last video, I built this shelter. I didn't use an ax, a knife or a saw. I just used my hands and a pair of gloves. The idea was to build a shelter you could easily build in a woodland without using any tools. I used sticks, branches, logs. All around this woodland floor, this is littered with natural resources. The natural materials are great when it comes to building things like a, a debris shelter. For the roof, well, you can see it's nice and green. It blends in really well with the environment. That's moss and that's going to keep it a lot of heat in when it comes to having a small fire on the inside of the shelter. So please stay tuned and watch the video up until the end to see what I get up to over the next three or four days. Hey, come on then, let's get this fire going.
Oh, it's lovely and warm in here. <laughs> Amber, come on then. Hey, come in here, it's lovely and warm. I know. Yep, this is home for the next three nights. You, me, three nights, right here. So the next thing I want to do is get the sheep skins and the deer hides and lay them down on the floor and then I'll be cooking up a bit of food. Come on. So I've got this black sheepskin, I've got this white sheepskin, and then I've got two deer hides with me. I'll put that there. And I think this one's gonna go on top. This. That'll keep me nice and warm. I'll give this one to Amber because she deserves a nice warm sheepskin for the night. So I'll place that one there. Uh, and this will be my bed for the night. Oh, Amber! <laughs> no, you're not sleeping on me. You're sleeping there, right next to me on that sheepskin. Hey. Right, well, now that we've got the fire going, we've got the bed sorted, now it's time to cook up a bit of food. Do you want some food? Yeah? Come on then. Yeah, let's get some dog food out of the bag for you. So in the pan I've got some chicken and then in here I have a potato, I've also got an onion and of course a bit of garlic. Got to have a bit of garlic when you're cooking in the woods. Oh and I've also got a carrot. No? <laughs> In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give half of this carrot to my dog. Ah. Mm. <laughs> she loves carrots. So that means I've got one potato, some garlic, one onion, and half a carrot, and some chicken. <laughs>
Cooking good in the woods. All right, that can only mean one thing. Time for a beer. And today's beer we have, it's actually one of my favorite beers. It's Cronenberg 1664. Cheers. Oh, I love it. In the woods. Got a shelter. Got a dog. Got everything I need. Got some food. I've even got spare batteries for the camera. Um, yeah. I love it. This really is what I love the most. Is camping out in the woods. Cheers. So if you haven't already worked it out, I'm cooking up a curry. This is a chicken madras curry. So it's fairly spicy and I've even got a few naan breads to go with it which I'm just going to warm over the top of the hot plate a bit, a little bit later on when all this is cooked. Comment below if you have a dog and let me know what sort of breed, what, what type of breed of dog you have. Oh, aren't they just great companions when you're out camping? Mwah. Hey. Mm, tired? Hey, are you tired? <laughs> As it's almost time to eat, I've got a few of these little naan breads, so I'm just gonna place them there to warm up. I'll leave them about a minute and then give them a flip. So if there's anyone watching that might be new to the channel, I just wanna say thank you very much for subscribing. If anyone would like to support the channel, then feel free to buy some of my merch. My merch is all about cooking good in the woods. There's chopping boards and I've got these titanium sporks as well and it even says cooking good in the woods on it as well as bushcraft tools and then I have these lovely cooksers there's a couple of different types you know what there's quite a few things on the website I'll put a link down below if not wait until the end of the video and you'll see a selection of the different types of merch that I have well the naan bread's looking good this is ready so it's time to take this off and off camera, when you guys were not watching, I quickly gave this a little clean. So now she is super clean, ready to use. I'm gonna put this down, oh, that's really hot. Ah, the time has come. Time to eat the chicken curry. Mm. Oh, that chicken, so tender, just falls apart. Let's try some carrot. So it's now time to get, get the sleeping bag out. And you can see this is where I'm gonna sleep. There's a sheepskin right here. That's, that's a, it's a black sheepskin. And that's where, that's why you probably can't see it because it's a bit camouflaged. That's where Amber's gonna sleep. This is where I'm sleeping tonight. I've just put a load of firewood on. It's super hot, I'm gonna close that down. I wanna just shut that damper down a little bit. So it stays a little bit open. 
The thing I found with this stove is it's quite tricky to keep it going all night. So you have to leave it open a little, little bit. And if you leave, leave it open full, it just burns itself straight out. Put that there, I've got my sleeping bag. Anyway, you've all seen this before, so I'm not gonna bore you, but I'm gonna see you all in the morning, so good night. Well, good morning. That wasn't actually too bad. I slept the whole way through. Uh, this, I had to put some more firewood on in the middle of the night. I'm glad I, I, just before I went to bed, I went and sourced a little bit more firewood. And I put it on, I don't know, it must have been, I don't have a clue, but it was dark and it was cold. So I put loads of firewood on and yeah, this has actually been going the whole night through. So. Um, if it wasn't for me getting that firewood before going to bed, I don't think this would have been going in the morning. All I had to do was open that up, put a few more little twigs in that I found down here, let a bit more air in, and it all just came back to life. So yeah, not too bad at all. Amber, I think she might have been a little bit too cold. So she's a bit tired now. Uh, she's had her breakfast. I'm just, so I've got a tea, a little Chinese, uh, sort of Chinese style tea. And then um, to go with it, for my breakfast, hey, oh, you're awake now. Mwah. I know, it was a little bit cold, wasn't it? And then to go with my tea, I've got some fruit somewhere down here. I've got a couple of kiwi fruits and an apple. So yeah, nothing really to cook up. Just a bit of a healthy, healthy breakfast today. Hey, we'll go for a little walk in a minute around the woods, won't we?
And if you're wondering how I'm getting a light into the shelter, well, I'm just using one of these, it's like a gorilla pod. And I've got this thing, which is a great little bit of kit. Super bright, you can adjust the settings on it. And yeah, it lights it up really well. But I just wanna show you how clean this wood stove is burning. So I've got it in there, I've got loads of wood in there, super hot. But look at that, there's no smoke at all to be seen. So if I just change the settings, if I just turn that down a little bit, can you see, you probably can't even see anything. No smoke at all to be seen. It's roaring hot, it really is. So yeah, that is how I light up the shelter and that shows you how stealth this wood stove is when it comes to burning fuel. Well, the trick is to make sure that your fuel, the wood that you're burning is super dry because any moisture in the wood will give off lots of smoke. So I found a nice little place for the knife, just hangs right there on that stick. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you what, Amber, she loves an apple. So I'm just gonna cut her off a little wedge. Nice little wedge of apple. Ooh, go on then. See ya. <laughs> oh, she loves it. Mm. Mm. I haven't had a kiwi fruit in months. So good. Well, I've just come across this, and this, by the looks of it, this is from a pine tree. And by looking up, I can see that there's pine trees all over the place. And the reason why I think this is a good find is because I know that in here, right in where these knots are, there'll be some fat wood, some resinous wood that's great for fire lighting. So what I'm going to do is use my saw and I'm going to saw off this little limb right there. Some people really struggle to find fat wood. What I do is I look for rotten pine on the forest floor and then I look for the junction. And that's exactly where all this resin will be concentrated when the wood dies, when the tree rots down, it's all going to be com become concentrated right here in this section. So I'm going to try and get as much of it as possible by going as close to the main branch or as close to this to the main trunk and already I can smell pine resin but what we're looking for 
is a real golden, orangey golden color inside this limb that I'm sawing off. And it should really smell very strong of pine resin. So it's the orangey color we're looking for. And there we are right there. In fact, I was expecting it to be a bit more orangey than that, but yeah, I can smell. That is a good bit of fatwood right there. If I just roll it over, you can see that is what we're looking for. Oh, lovely. Love that stuff. So I'm gonna put this in my pocket and we'll have a look at it later on when we get back to the camp. Oh yeah, keep that. And the other thing you'll notice with this fatwood is it weighs quite a lot, a lot, a lot heavier than you'd expect it to weigh. And I've just come across a bit of this honeysuckle, which is another great resource. It's good for cordage making. You can pull off these fibers, twist them together, and make yourself an endless amount of cordage. It's also great for friction fire lighting. However, you do want a bit of a thicker piece of, of the uh, honeysuckle rather than a small thin stem like this. And another thing it's great for is weaving. You can even take these smaller, younger shoots that are more pliable and weave yourself anything from a basket to a crayfish or a lobster pot. And here's another bit of rotten pine. It's quite heavy again. Let's see if there's anything inside this one. Oh, look at that, much better. Real darker, orangey color. Lovely, we'll keep that. So just further up this rotten trunk that's lying on the forest floor, you can see that right there is a very thin section and it's quite wide here on top because this is the rotten outer wood that's broken down, decaying, and just simply rotting away. This is where the fat wood will be. That dense bit right in the middle, that is where we're gonna find our fat wood. Remember, we're looking for an orangey colour. And it's gone a little bit light because of the saw marks. But right there, that is a nice bit of orangey coloured fat wood. That is it. So it looks like a squirrel has been perched right here, chomping away at these pine cones trying to get to the small seeds within them. And as we're in a bit of pine woodland, it was only a matter of time before coming across something like this. And you can see, this is where the trees have had a bit of a wound. It's oozed out lots of pine resin and it's all congealed. It's all solid. I'll try, try and break a little piece off. There you go. Little piece right there. Great for, again, for fire lighting. If it's uh, tricky to get a fire going, you can put scatter a little bit of this onto your small flickering flames. This will melt down and catch fire. A little bit like how I lit the fire yesterday. However, because it wasn't exposed, the pine resin yesterday was underneath the bark, therefore it's still quite runny. Another thing you can do with this is you can make a primitive adhesive. Have a look at one of my previous videos and you'll see how to turn this into a caveman glue. And this is a little bit of wood sorrel. This is a wild edible. And the thing is, I've got plenty of food with me, but if, if I was ever in a situation where I didn't have any food and I was in the woods, would I rely on this to eat? Well, if there's nothing else to eat, yeah. But I'll tell you what, it would take you a hell of a lot of picking in order to get yourself a meal's worth of this. Slight citrusy note to it. 
other than that, nothing wrong with it. Lovely. So now that we've made it back to camp, I've got my knife, which has got my built-in fire steel. I've got some of that fat wood. Let's try and process it and see if we can get a flame. I'm just creating a little pile of these curls or shavings and then I'm going to scrape using my knife I'm going to scrape lots of this in order to create some really fine shavings the wood I'm scraping onto this stump is really rotten And there we have it. There's our fat wood shavings. So I'm just getting some firewood ready for tonight. And what I'm doing is I'm taking advantage of some of this dead wood that's been suspended in the trees. So it's been wind dried. And here you can see I've got this, I've got these two uh, trunks coming up from this tree. And just by wedging it into, in between these trunks, it means I can really get a good handhold and easily saw away at the wood that I need for fire for the fire tonight. Ah. 
Well, the sun went down a couple of hours ago. It's now dark outside and the fire's nice and warm. I've got plenty of firewood for tonight. And uh, I think I might cook some food up. I get a lot of questions in the comment section asking how I prepare for a three or four day trip like this when it comes to food. So I'm gonna show you what I have right here. What I do is I pack, I work out everything that I wanna eat throughout the day and I pack it all down into one or two bags or sometimes use Tupperwares. This here, this is my meal for tonight. And in here I've got some, I've got some noodles, I've got some more garlic, I've got an onion, I've got some broccoli as well. I've got some steak, which is beef steak. And then I've got a nice seasoning, um, well it's like a marinade. This is tonight's meal and it's going to be an Asian style stir fry. Oh, and there's also a chilli as well. So that is how I prepare and I prepare every day I have a, a pack like this for each day and once again whether it's a bag or whether it's a Tupperware and then when it comes to cooking oil I normally have a little bottle like this with a little bit of cooking oil in it so that I can use a little bit if and when I need to as for pots and pans chopping boards cups and uh, tongs things like that well I normally bring a something like this with me if not I'll always have this set with me which has got at the moment it's got water in it but it's also got another pot inside it which I, um, I use as like a dog bowl uh, but yeah the great thing is that this has just been boiling so that's why it's quite hot but I've got some water in here so I'm going to be steaming I'm going to be well quickly steaming my noodles in the pot right there and then these weigh quite a lot you know I wouldn't take this if I was going hiking up a mountain but I would take it for a few days if I'm not that far from the car. If you're wondering how far I am from the car, I'm about a 20 minute walk from, the, from where I parked up. It is quite heavy. I don't recommend taking this on a, long, on a long journey, especially if you're hiking a lot, but it is a great resource. It's a great pan because it's cast iron and it holds the heat really well. So I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna cook some steak up in there. I've got some bits and pieces to fry up as well. Do the noodles. Add some chili, um, add the sauce as well, and yeah, I've, and that's pretty much it. And then obviously I've got that chopping board which I showed you, and I've got this cookster which I use for drinking tea, drinking water, and also for drinking beer, of course. When it comes to water, well, water weighs quite a lot. I think the majority of the weight in my backpack is probably water. So with that being said, I'm going to start preparing some of my food. Like I've got some broccoli. I'm going to cut those up into some smaller pieces. <laughs> uh, I've got some noodles as well. Great, great uh, camping, hiking food resource because they're lightweight. Hey, excuse me, that's my broccoli because they're lightweight and all you need to do is add water. And in here I've got some, what did I put? I put some, I've got some teriyaki. I've got, I think I put a little bit of soy sauce in it. Put some Chinese five spice in here, sesame oil. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. That is what I have in this. And this is what's gonna really change what will otherwise be my plain, almost bland food. This is gonna take it to another level so yeah this is going to be the magic ingredient again everything packs down into bags I've planned everything for every day next thing I want to pull out of the bag is an onion So for the onion, I just want to slice it really thin, really finely. 
because this is, I'm not going to fry this. The idea is I'm going to put this into my broth right at the end. So it stays crispy or crunchy. So I'm going to leave those whole because I like them when they're whole rather than finely chopped. Get those seeds in there. So I've got a very thin piece of frying steak here. It's going to be a quick flash fry and then it'll be done. Run a little bit of chilli in there as well. Oh, got a little piece of onion, that's fine. And I've saved a little piece of beef for Amber. So I don't really want this to cook for too long, I only, only really want to flash fry it. So I've got the flavouring from the garlic and some chilli, got the beef in there, and then shortly I'll be adding my seasoning, or my bottle of magic juice, the goodness, right there. Oh wow, that smells incredible. All those Asian flavors. And then the noodles. And that is my meal for tonight. Look at that, got this lovely flavoursome broth. Got some nice chilli in there, broccoli, beef. Oh, it's gonna be good. Mm. Wow. 
try the beef. Mmm. Look at that broth. Oh, I'm sorry you can't taste this, but trust me, it is absolutely delicious. Mmm. Mm. I think it's quite important to plan your meals when you're out camping, especially for a few days, because you want to you want to change it up every day. You want it to be a little bit different. And um, otherwise, if you're just having plain noodles, it can probably become a bit boring. Oh, that beef though. You know what? Oh, that was amazing. That was just incredible. I think I'm gonna drink one more beer and probably go to bed. Hey, what do you think? What do you think about that idea, Amber? Hey, what do you think about that idea? Hey, watch out. Yeah, I was tired as well. I know you're tired as well. Hey, mwah. That is it. That is it for tonight. If you're still watching, thank you very much, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Good night. Oh, good morning to you too, Amber. <sighs> oh, good morning. Oh. Why have you always got to sit on me? cold last night wasn't it? Yeah it was cold. Well, the fire went out in the middle of the night. So I just had to saw up a bit of wood and get the fire going once again. So here's another little tip for when you're out camping. To keep everything clean, what I do is I take a bag again and I take a scouring, a sponge, and a little bottle of washing up liquid. It means that when I'm not filming and between meals, I can clean my chopping board, my cooks and my spork, um, my frying pan, and even this cooking pot. So a great little tip, doesn't weigh much at all, but it really does help when you're out camping. 
And for my last tip of the day, using your sleeping bag bag, you can then put your jacket in it or any clothing you're not wearing when you go to sleep, roll it up and that turns into your pillow. I've got a sweet potato here. I'm gonna put this in the fire and hopefully over the next hour, it's gonna slowly cook. I'm just gonna put it in the entrance. I've pushed all the coals to the back of the wood stove. I've put it in the entrance, I've closed the door and now, well, let's find something to do.
it looks like this might be where a deer has been resting maybe during the daytime or maybe it's been sleeping overnight but I quite often find these when I'm out in the woods and if you look carefully enough you can quite often find a hair what is a deer hair and the way you can tell is by breaking the hair in half or you can rip it in half and what you'll find is the hair is hollow which is why the deer hair makes such good hairs for uh, fly fishing for tying flies but today doesn't seem like I can find any oh actually there's one there very small hair right there and another thing with deer hair is they they'll break really easily there we go, I've just broken it in half So this low-lying area, which is quite open, I think this is why there's quite a few trees that have been blown over by the wind, is because the trees are exposed to that sharp, strong wind. And because the ground is a low-lying ditch, it's very soggy, the ground is very boggy, which means the roots don't really have much of a root hold. As soon as they wobble a bit with the wind, over they go. So there's a fallen tree there, there's one over there, there's one right, here behind me there's one there as well yeah quite a few trees and you can just see how open this place is and look at the moss how much moss there is wow and there's another birch polypore Right there, on this old rotten birch. Good bit of tinder. Take that back to camp, put it in my tinder pouch. Birch bark. Looks like there's been a few deer walking through here and that must be a really small one. A little Bambi. Let's check these sweet potatoes. What's she barking at? Oh, that's half of it's cooked. Just gonna give it a turn, put it back in. That is cooked. Place it right there. So the sweet potato's cooked. And as it's my final night, I've got a bit of a cheeky meal. Nice easy one. No, it's not dog food. Um, I've got some Heinz beans in a rich tomato sauce with pork sausages. <laughs> you know, this is, this is the ultimate camping food. 
nice and easy you just have to heat it up you could do it in a tin but I'm gonna do it in this oh I think I've still got some water left over ah not wasting that right so yeah Heinz beans and pork sausages why not Oh yes, look at this, cheeky food. Cheers. then sit down just had your dinner you got one meal left for you that's your breakfast tomorrow and then we're going home and I've got I got I've got a little bag of mixed nuts I think there's some pumpkin seeds sunflower seeds uh, raisins goji berries one of those little mixed bags of nutty goodness Hey. Oh, this is smelling good. Tired? <laughs> yeah. I know what you want. You want my food, but you just had your food. just noticed those cobwebs starting to form at the back of the shelter so at least I've made a home for a few of these woodland insects okay you'd live here wouldn't you you'd love to live here if I fed you every day Two minutes. Two more minutes. Sausage, beans, and a little bit of sweet potato. Mm. Mm. Don't forget to leave me a comment telling me what your favourite camping food is and if you've got any ideas of what I can cook up next time let me know
Well, that was good. <laughs> Speaking of insects, have a look at this. Little lady, is it a ladybug or a ladybird? I can't remember. I think it's a ladybug. That's cool. Well, it's been a great few days in the woods. I'm actually really happy I built this because it's surprisingly homely and comfortable. And where I've chosen to put my bed, it gives me this kind of like, it's like a deck chair. It's like a poolside deck chair kind of incline. And uh, yeah, it's surprisingly comfortable. Um, so I'm just going to finish my the last of my beer. And then I've got about half a litre of water left. I'll drink about half of that tonight. Save the other half quarter of a litre for tomorrow morning. To get me back to the car. And then I'll be home for a shower. The world is deserves maybe even a bath. You know, I might just have a bath. Lie in the bath for about an hour, put some music on, and enjoy the luxuries that we have in life, which we don't really have here in the woods. So, on that note, I'm going to prepare myself for bed, and I will see you all in. God, bad hair day. It's been a bad hair day for about three days now. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Well, I managed to keep the fire going last night. Brilliant. So now for a quick cup of tea and then pack everything away. Come on then, we're going home now. Well that is it for the video. It's been four days right here. It's been great fun. It did get a little bit cold at one point, but I'm glad that I got the, I, I sorted out the food supplies before I came. Everything's worked out just right. I've got a little bit of water left. I've got no food left. I'm gonna go home now, I really need a shower, but I just wanna say thanks a lot for you still watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know if you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up below. And comment as well if you wanna see me build another shelter like this, or even come back here to stay in this shelter for another couple of days while it's still quite cold during these wintry months. Amber's over there playing with a bit of wood. And last thing I wanna say is the merch that I have you're gonna see about 30 seconds of footage at the end of the video. If you are interested, please follow the link below. It'll take you to the merch store where you can help support these videos and keep funding what I do out here in the woods and on the channel. Thanks a lot, goodbye.